Tigra, how you live with the kid ready kid? I'm back with another reaction video. The video I'm gonna write to is from watchmojo.com and it said that the top 10 2000 show that you that you f forgot that was great. And I saw the weekends and the thumbnail up like bruh. How did I forget the weekends when I did my throw my throwback story time for cartoon? Uh, go go watch that by the way. While I talk about all my favorite cartoons from child from my childhood, bro. I used to watch the weekends every weekend. How do I forget about them? Anyway, don't make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share us on all your social medias. Without further ado, let's get into it. This video is brought to you by Time Pop. Download Time Pop today to get your fresh daily dose of nostalgia. It's time to dust the cow. Dark Angel! <laughs> Jessica Alba! Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 2000 shows you forgot were awesome. It is a simple game. You're the observant, exposed. I don't know what that is. Player has a strategy, but only one will win. The one who correctly answers the question who is the mole. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at shows that aired primarily in the 2000s, but we will be considering shows that touch down with a season or two in either the X Men Evolution. Of course, what matters most is that Amanda, shows Amanda Bynes. The weekends. So I guess now we know it's not a good compromise to make Tito. people as miserable as a snail and a salt shaker. Ugh, it's better to do stuff we all like. Number ten, dark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my baby, Dark Angel. Vicious cult classic created by James Cameron. And what happened to the show? Alba in a breakout role captured viewers' attention with its cyberpunk setting and strong female lead. Alba played a genetically engineered super soldier, part of Project Manticore. Created by the U.S. government prior to a terrorist cyber attack that crippled the country. Looking for me? The series follows Alba's character Max as she attempts to reconnect with her genetically altered brothers and sisters while being hunted by the secret organization that created her. Sadly, Dark hey. Angel aired on Fox, and it became one of the many cult classics to be canceled by the network before its time. What the hell was that? The only kind of physical contact you and I are going to have. Number nine. You want to be in it? Like about you. You, you are fascinating. What a Amanda Bynes, what I like about you, man. I used to, I used to love this show. And the uptight older Val, two estranged sisters used to live together in New York City with a colorful cast of friends and loved ones. The lovable and relatable characters were one of this show's biggest draws. Where's Jeff? Well, you should be back any second. Actually, you might want to step away from the door. <laughs> Despite the show's steady ratings, the WB, the network it aired on, was failing and ultimately merged with UPN. Oh. The shows from each network carried over to the new station, christened the CW. And sadly, what I like about you was one of the merger's casualties. I know it's mannish and homely, but on the bright side, they made me pay for it. Number eight, Boston Legal. Don't waste your time. Heard of it, but didn't watch it. Of the popular legal drama The Practice introduced Alan Shore and a number of his associates at the firm of Crane, Pool, and Schmidt. After the end of The Practice, the members of Crane, Pool, and Schmidt received their own spin off, with both James Spader and William Shatner returning as Shore and his partner Danny Crane, respectively. Much to the delight of viewers, the show didn't shy away from fourth wall breaks and Star Trek references. They called them Klingons. Do you say Klingons? The legal drama won acclaim and viewers for its quick wit, doing well in the coveted 18 to 24 demographic, reaching 100 episodes and earning multiple Emmy awards. Step up here, counsel. This is never good when they ask me to step up. Number seven, Nip Tuck. Take me back to bed. Chris. I watched like two episodes of Nip Tuck. Bloody surgeries, sex addicted characters, and more vanity than you could shake a scalpel at, Nip Tuck proved to be an on point commentary about humanity's worst most basic impulses, dressed up as a sexy rock. Unlike other medical shows, which have generally focused on doctors who save lives, this FX series fixated on plastic surgeons. Dr. Sean McNamara and Dr. Christian Choi were both dark and troubled, and their personal lives were oh so very walkable. Of course, helping it stand out in the genre was its decision not to focus on episodic plots, but season-long story arcs. It ended in 2010, but is still worth a watch today. Do you realize when the last time was I flew anything but first class? I could give a shit. Number six, Kyle XY. 
Everyone taking stupid pills around here? Juice me! When this sci-fi high school drama premiered, it became the highest rated show in ABC Family Network's history. Kyle XY began with the discovery of a strange boy in the woods with no memory, no clothes, and most puzzling of all, no belly button. Despite his hyper intelligence and ability to learn they watched the theater. incredibly quickly, Kyle's social skills were slow to develop, and he had a difficult time adapting to high school and navigating social relationships, including new adoptive siblings and his first crush. No good vibes. Psych. Unfortunately, a dip in ratings saw it canceled after three seasons. Few people remember it now, but in its heyday, it was a big deal and worthy of the hype. I don't know where I belong. I don't know where I come from. Number five, X-Men Evolution. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. While other X-Men shows have stuck in the public memory, this one from the 2000s, despite earning critical praise, has somewhat been forgotten among casual fans. How? Updated the team for the new millennium, recasting many of the heroes as teens attending Xavier School, and updated them to reflect modern attitudes and social issues. The friendly bad teach don't mess the road. <laughs> While it was influenced by contemporary sources like the X Men films and Ultimate Universe, it also became influential in its own right. It inspired other X Men media in terms of theme and style, and introduced original characters, most notably. Young female clone of Wolverine, X twenty three. I liked her. Number four, the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Synchronized. This Saturday morning cartoon followed four middle school friends on their weekend adventures. The diverse characters included a relatable cast, the tomboyish and brave floor, the stylish and cool Carver, the nerdy vegetarian Tish, and of course the leader of the group. The wacky Tino. So this is looking like the ultimate weekend. Oh, hi, it's Tino. With it's Break it off our wall. Strong relationships and interesting plot lines. It proved very popular. Though this should have guaranteed its legacy, it's not remembered as well as other cartoons of the era. It did a bit of network hopping within the Disney family, but it certainly played a factor. But seriously, given that it was once dubbed, quote, the show that killed Pokemon, the weekenders should not be forgotten. So this weekend, we need to have twice as much fun to make up for last weekend's major tragedy. Number three, Monk. I don't have an abundance of hope. Let me enjoy the little I have. Airing on the USA Network, Monk became arguably the most watched network TV show of the decade. An equal parts comedy and drama, it followed Adrian Monk, a detective with Sherlock Holmes-level talent, but a laundry list of compulsions and phobias. Is that why you wash your hands every two minutes? Probably. Strange attitude, both hilarious and tragic, and many, many eccentricities made him an endearing and likable character. The show also called back to detective stories from another era, bunking the recent friend of detectives who solved murders using fantastical tech, unfollowed clues, and used his intellect to crack every case he came across. For fans of current detective shows who missed it, you should definitely check out this gem from the office. Yes, I'm back. This quiet one. Number two, Chuck. Chuck, what are you doing? Uh, escaping. This fresh take on spy shows featured Zachary Levi as the titular character, a brilliant but under-motivated 20-something who has a supercomputer downloaded into his brain. The supercomputer, known as The Intercept, makes Chuck a valuable asset. And so he begins working with CIA agent Sarah Walker and NSA major John Casey. The show deftly balanced spy thriller elements with emotional plot lines involving Chuck's double life. The NSA, CIA, it's me. It was a little tougher to explain, but... As the show went on, critical acclaim grew, but viewership declined, mostly due to major competition in its time slot. Nevertheless, devoted fans helped the series achieve renewal multiple seasons in a row, culminating with a final fifth season. What about me, though? In case you're super spies, Morgan's the intersect. Who am I? What's my job? You're our leader. Number one, Deadwood. I don't trust you as far as I can tell you. I enjoy the way you lie. Westerns may have fallen out of fashion decades ago, but this often overlooked gem from HBO is considered by many to be one of the greatest Western TV shows of all time. Well, I'd make it a large gesture, but uh, you'll work something out. 
sadly, far too many people have no recollection of it. Airing on premium cable, who would have the freedom to be as violent and gritty as the Old West? Something the show took full advantage of. Based on and set in the town of Deadwood, South Dakota in the 1870s, it used historical figures and events as inspiration for the series. Regrettably, HBO decided not to renew Deadwood after its third season, ending it tragically short. We must end our connection. You understand that, Francis? Make us some lunch and drink there in the long run. Yeah, uh, like I said, I recognize The Weekenders, I recognize Dark Angel, I recognize X-Men Evolution. Those were my shows. I love those shows. But, you know, Jessica Alba got, no, became super popular. She's like a, a millionaire or a billionaire, I, I don't remember, but Jessica Alba is, is really popular now. This is probably what got her a start. Anyway, don't make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share us on all your social media. Man, every season is grind season. Let's get it.